Hello and welcome back to the Linear Algebra series. This is already part 20 and today we look at the connection between matrices and linear maps. In particular, we will show that each linear map induces a matrix. But of course, you already know, first I want to thank all the nice people who support this channel on Steady, via PayPal or by other means. As a supporter, you are able to download the PDF version of this video. Okay, then without further ado, let's look at a linear map. Now for us, this is an abstract map we call F and the domain is the vector space Rn. And on the other hand, the codomain is the vector space Rm. And there please recall, such a linear map fulfills two properties. Roughly said, the two properties explain that you can pull out the addition sign and scalars. And indeed, these two things make a map linear. However, now exactly these two properties we can use to simplify this abstract map. We just need to use that this vector x here can be written with n components. More concretely, x can be written as a column vector where we have x1 until xn. This is very helpful because it means we can express S as a linear combination. More precisely, what we need are just the canonical unit vectors. And there, please recall, they have the names E1, E2 and so on. So the important thing you should see here is that we get a canonical linear combination for each vector x in Rn. And indeed, this will help us now to simplify this abstract linear map F. For this, let's put the linear combination into the map F. So you see, each image f of x can be written in this more complicated form. However, now you should recognize that we have vector additions and scalar multiplications inside the function f. In other words, we are able to use all the linearity properties here. So let's pull out the plus signs here and the scalar factors. Therefore, we get x1 times the vector f of e1 plus the similar thing, but now with the index 2. And then of course, this continues until the last index n. Hence, the result here is that we have a linear combination with n vectors. Moreover, this means if you want to know the vector f of x, it's sufficient to know n vectors f of e1, f of e2 and so on. So this is what you can remember, this is our important conclusion here. So in other words, if you want to calculate all possible images of this linear map f, you just need to know what are the images of the canonical unit vectors. This means that these images here have the same information as the whole linear map f. And exactly this insight leads us to the matrix representation of a linear map. Okay, then in order to formulate this proposition, let's assume again that we have a linear map from Rn into Rm. And then the claim is that there is exactly one matrix A. And there you might already know this matrix A should have m rows and n columns. And moreover, please recall from the last video that each such matrix A induces a linear map we call Fa. And then, of course, the meaning of our claim here is that our linear map F is exactly Fa. So in other words, if you want to calculate f of x, then you can just multiply the matrix A with the vector x. So in summary, what is written here is that there is exactly one such matrix A, such that this equation here is fulfilled for all vectors x in Rn. And indeed, it's not hard at all to tell you how this matrix A should look like. So you can simply remember in the columns of this matrix A, we find the images of the canonical unit vectors. This means the first column here is just f of e1. And then, not surprising at all, the second column is f of e2. Hence, you can fill in all the columns until the last one, f of en. Okay, with this we have the whole proposition here, which tells us how an abstract linear map can be translated into a table of numbers. So you see, it's the converse of the statement we explained in the last video. 
And of course, in this video here, we can now prove this nice fact here. Now, for the proof here, you should see that we have two statements. First, existence of the matrix, and second, uniqueness of the matrix. Okay, starting with the existence, you see we just have to check that this matrix here does the work. So we just check if fa of x is the same as f of x. Now, this is not so hard because we just multiply the matrix A with the vector x. And there we call the vector x has n components. So it's the matrix A from above times this column vector here. Okay, and here we can use that we know how the matrix vector multiplication works. Namely, the first component here gets multiplied with the first column there. And then the whole procedure continues until we have a linear combination with n columns. However, now when you see this linear combination here, it should remind you that we have seen this in the first minutes of the video. Namely, here we can simply use the linearity of f to get f of x. And there you see, this proves the existence because there the matrix A does the job. Therefore, the only thing missing now is the proof of the uniqueness. Indeed, often one can do such a proof by simply assuming that we have two different matrices with the same property. Or more precisely, we take two matrices A and B and show that they are the same. So what we put in is that F is FA and F is FB. And of course, this immediately implies that FA is the same as FB. More concretely, this means that A applied to a vector x is the same as B applied to a vector x. And of course, this holds no matter which vector x in Rn we choose. Okay, then in the next step here, we can bring Bx to the left hand side. Then, by using the properties of the matrix product, we can write it as A minus B times x. And now this is equal to the zero vector in Rm. And the important fact here is that this still holds for all possible vectors x in Rn. In particular, we can choose the canonical unit vectors. For example, here if we use ei for x, this equation here tells us that the ith column of this matrix here is the zero vector. And now of course this argument works for all indices i, hence all the columns of this matrix are zero. So in short, a minus b is the zero matrix. Which simply implies that a is equal to b. And there you see, this shows us the uniqueness for the matrix representation of a linear map. Therefore, the proof is indeed finished. Okay, and now the important result here you should remember is that we can translate between a matrix and a linear map. And most importantly, we can do it in both ways. Okay. And why this is so useful, we will see in the next video. So have a nice day and bye.